I'm going to show you and I'm going to give you a, a template to develop what I would call a true action plan for goal setting. Let me tell you a little about the elements that sit within that. The first is the goal itself. And it's got those five elements. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistically high, and has a target date. The second is every goal has to have a reward. What's your reward for achieving that goal? New clothes, something special, dinner that I'm really looking forward to. Could be a hundred different things. But you need a reward. Expansion of my business in a certain way. New piece of product that I'm buying new piece of equipment I'm getting. With every reward, if I don't achieve that goal, comes a consequence. What's going to happen if you don't achieve your goal? And it's obviously got to be something that, boy, you know what? If I don't get this goal, things aren't going to be good. Maybe you're saving for your, a child's education. Can't send my kid to school. I'm going to have to get a loan. Then he's going to have a coupon book. That's not going to be fair. So I've, I've got to get it. I've got to move out of that consequence. And then come the three most important elements of the goal. You must understand the obstacles <clears throat> that could potentially be in front of you. What most people do is they set a goal and they don't think that there are any obstacles. They simply say, oh yeah, I'm going to get that done. I, I, can, I can do that. But there are obstacles. There's always going to be obstacles. And things you can't control. Gas prices or, or something of that nature that, that you can't control. You've got to step aside from the business for a month for a personal reason. Family illness or something like that. Those are all obstacles that you set. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time to do this. How am I going to get this done? Because you see, then with, once you identify the obstacle, you're easily identifying the solutions. Solutions basically are the answer to your obstacles. Let's take, a, take an exercise program. You know, why is Goals Gym crowded from January 1st to January 10th, <laughs> and then from the 11th going forward, it's empty? Well, what happens is, you know, everybody says, well, I, well you know what, this is going to be my exercise gym. I'm going to get up at 5.30 every day, I'm going to run a half a mile or a mile, and then I'm going to go to the gym, work out for, for 45 minutes, come home, shower, and I'll feel great every day to go to work. Why are you stopping? Well, waking up at 5.30, it's cold in the morning. I hate running alone and, you know, those are all my obstacles. Well, how am I going to fix that? How do I avoid that? What are my solutions to that? I don't want to run alone? Well, maybe I've got to find a friend. I don't like doing it in the morning? Well, maybe I should set up a time in the evening and do it. When should I do that? How should I play it? But I'm going to have obstacles. So what are the solutions? Then what comes is the most important thing, and that is the action step. You see, when goals during accountability sessions, when goals are not being achieved, it's the action steps that need to change in order to get back on track to the goal. Not changing the goal not saying, well, can't make a half a million dollars this year, so I'll be happy with $100,000. It's okay. Is it? Is that why you started your business? Or it's okay that instead of developing five new products, I'm only going to develop one. I was too aggressive in my thinking. Well, what are you? Or do you have a new action that you need to take? It's all about identifying the obstacles, finding the solutions, and finding the actions. 
When I meet with corporations, we develop goals. And some of the act uh, strategic plans that I have have 20 to 30 goals in them. And then some of them are related to sales, some to marketing, some to organization structure, financial measurements, customer service, employee relations, any number of different things. When we review them, usually I, I go in and I'll review them with them every two weeks to four weeks. And we'll sit down and they'll say, well, you know, I, I know I was supposed to sell 30 of those coffee cups with coffee in it, but I only sold two. So what do we do? How do we, how do we change the action? Maybe we find new channels of marketing. Maybe we find a new system. Maybe we have to offer the coffee, less coffee in the cup. I'm not sure of the answers, but I know that the actions need to change in order to accomplish the goal. That's what I'm aware of. That's what I know has to occur. And that's what the accountability is done for. And whether you bring in somebody to help you, whether it's a, a colleague, a relative, somebody whom you trust from a mentoring point of view, bring in someone and say, okay, these were my goals this year for my business. Who's holding you accountable for these goals? Because I will tell you, and I have from my own business, I, I go and talk to other consultants who hold me accountable. Mark, you said you were going to you know, sell 15 new clients this year. You're, you're not even close. Well, I know. I, I've got to get back. I've got to change my pattern. So you change your pattern. We all need to be held accountable in our businesses. It's critical. And I don't care what kind of a business you're in. Whether you're in a service business, you're in a product business, you need to hold yourselves accountable. And you can't just do it by looking one night and say, yeah, I'm missing it. You've got to believe me when I tell you, have someone across the table say, Mary, you're just not getting it done. We've got to, we've got to change the way you're thinking. You've got to change the way you're acting. You've got to change your actions. The other key elements of this is the responsibility of the goal. Who's responsible for the various actions? And what are the dates that all of this is due? 